Runk. <laughs> Ottawa, Ottawa, I'm there September 21st. Uh, Pittsburgh, October 19th. Cleveland, October 20th. Detroit, Michigan. Orlando, Florida. Fort Myers, Richmond, Virginia. Baltimore, Maryland. Philadelphia and Reading. Uh, can't wait to get out there. The only I'm, the other ones are pretty so, are sold out, so that's what I'm only saying, the ones that aren't. Uh, I think there actually are some tickets left for Edmonton. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, go to chrislee.com to get them tickets. Um, and that's really what's going on here, dude. Uh, we got that merch. We got that merch going on, and we love the merch. Of course we do. It's got the Pockets Stay Deep. We've got the Pockets Stay Deep exclusive merch. And we say exclusive just because it's not exclusive at all, but that's what makes it absolutely amazing. It's uh, You can say it's exclusive means pretty much nothing. Who decides the uh, – who decides – the uh, number of exclusive uh, of exclusivity uh who decides that everything can be exclusive everything can be exclusive it doesn't matter if there's four or four million because there can always be more um so we got the pocket stay deep very very nice absolutely beautiful with that sparkle with the pot with the star in the back pockets stay deep and we've got the grow or die hoodies. It is winter is creeping up. It's fall. Do you want to be freezing or do you not? We've got the beautiful grow or die hoodies at chrisdalia.com. So go on over and get that improved. We also got life rips decals for your car. Uh, and without further ado, let's make it happen. The next new incredible exclusive episode of Congratulations. <laughs> Brings up a good uh, kind of uh, point there, though, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Who? Me. Nice. What is exclusivity, you know? Really, really, it's in the eye of the beholder. Uh, when I was when I was younger, somebody in my class thought it was the eye of the beholder, and a guy was just holding a bee. Uh, see, idiot. That guy grew up. He's probably dead now. Um, so it's all good, dude. You live and learn. Grow or die. That's what we say. Yeah, <laughs> you know? Uh, but that's what's going on. I was in... Dude, let me just actually start off. Well, okay, so I was in Little Rock. Hey, Little Rock is a f- fantastic time in Little Rock. It's too hot. It, the thing about Little Rock is, I, and I, I say this now that, I can, now that I've been there, and I should have said this on stage while I was there because I did some stuff on it, and I'm going to post it to my YouTube. Uh, but L- Little Rock, Arkansas is... You know, some people listen to this overseas. And first of all, it's Little Rock, Arkansas is, you want to know what Little Rock, Arkansas is? Okay, here it is. It's the place that 48 hours, the first 48, that's where it's filmed the most, is, for, is, is either there or Memphis, okay? Um, like you turn on the first 48 and it's like Little Rock, Arkansas. You're like, of course it is. They don't even have to say it anymore. Just say when it's not Little Rock, Arkansas. Oh, yeah, and this also isn't Little Rock, Arkansas. Anyway, we're trying to find out who did it in 48 hours. Um... So Little Rock, Arkansas is the whitest and blackest place there is. The mix of super white and super black in every sense. It's unbelievable, dude. You've got like, first of all, all sorts of... Like the the white country good old boys that are you got the ones with like very 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 hey how's it going and then the ones that are just like and you're like oh you just spit on a bird on the ground and you're like I don't I don't look what are you here for and then you got we walked through a. It's not just black people. We walked through, Calvin and I walked through. It was just me and him. I took, it was just just dad and son, Calvin, at Little Rock, Arkansas. Kristen and William stayed at a wedding uh, in v- Vermont or something, or no, uh, Virginia. I always say Vermont. I'm not coming to Vermont, by the way. I'm coming to Virginia. I may I may do Vermont at some point, but Virginia is where I'm going. I always say I'm going to be in Ver- Vermont. And people hit me up like, where's that Vermont date? And I just say it instead of Virginia because they're both V's and I'm an idiot. Um, but we went to this place that was like the riverfront or something. And there was a full on 
not just concert, all black people and the most soul. First, I've ever been a part of, Calvin's ever been a part of, but I've ever been a part of, dude. I walked, I was with Calvin walking through Little Rock, Arkansas, and the music kept getting louder. And I don't remember what song it was, but it was some shit like, I'm going down, I'm going down, down, you know that fucking song or whatever? Um, and some lady, you know, some, some, some bigger black lady was just singing and just killing it. And I'm like, we're getting pretty close. We're going to have to see what this is. All black people, dude, and black people just have a good time. You know what I'm talking about? It's just such a good time. And I'm like holding Calvin and I'm like, I kind of want to have one of these good times. Now I don't like, but look, I'm not black and can I do it? And also I don't want to, I hate concerts, you know? But I don't want to impose that on Calvin. So what if he likes it? So I walk up and then I realize that literally everybody is black. And I'm talking about there's 300 black people just at the riverfront, just listening to this lady sing pretty damn well, full on band. And they're all just groove into it, you know? And I walk up and I'm like, I guess I got to go in because if I don't, I seem racist, right? Because if I'm like, nah, not for me, I'm like, why not? And I don't want Calvin to think like that. I want Calvin to be exposed to everything. So I just fucking walk. Hey, I just walk right up. I just walked right through and we listened to some soul shit, dude. Calvin and I. And uh, we were grooving a little bit. And we walked right through it. It was too hot. And then we got there and I realized that, you know what? I'm exposing Calvin to all sorts of cultures and that's great. And then Calvin goes like this. It's too loud. And so we left. So... In a way, he said black people are too loud. So that's racist. Um, but I have a racist son. So um, we went to a wedding. Uh, shout out to Mary Ellen Dom, who got married in, uh, I, I, where were we even? New York Upstate. I never, yeah, I've been to Upstate New York for shows and we were staying in like a place. It was a, ho- I guess it was a hotel, but there were more cabins and we didn't have a TV. And it was fucking, <laughs> the first thing Calvin said when he woke up, he was like, why does this room have no TV? We went to bed when we got there. We went to bed and he, when we woke up, he says, why does this room not have any TV? I'm like, buddy, some questions your father just can't answer. And, um, and uh, it's just, it, it was so hot and shit and, and they got married. It was beautiful. The wedding was beautiful. We had a great time. And then we went on a trip to a place, Fremont, what the hell was it called? Kirk? Mind Kirkland, I don't know, someplace upstate New York, Fremont or Kirkland or some shit like that. And uh, we stayed in a, a house that was absolutely haunted, right? Now, I don't believe in that shit. I don't believe in that shit. I don't believe houses are haunted. I don't believe any place is haunted because ghosts don't exist. Know why? Where are they? Because there was somebody in our party because we stayed with like, it was like eight to 10 people at the house, like all Kristen's friends from when she was like in a college and all the kids that they, they had and Calvin and William. And we were all there. And we were having a good time, dude. We got this Airbnb that if you looked at it, you'd be like, okay, haunted, right? Because when was it built? Absolutely not in this century. You know what I'm talking about? And I don't mean 2000s. I mean, 90, like this shit could have been made before like the Ryman Theater, which I'll get to because I played that in Nashville. But uh, we, somebody looked up the history in the house. I'm like, I'm not even looking because it's going to say something about being haunted. Lo and behold, it did. But um, apparently the house was like a safe haven for certain people in the war that would like get shot or their legs would get sewn off. And then they would like come and like seek refuge at this house. So, you know, so one of the people in the party was like, oh, this place is haunted. We're going to wake up and there's going to be ghosts with like one leg and shit. And nobody ever sees ghosts that like just died, you know? Everyone's always like, go, this is like some fucking, somebody with a bonnet and like a cane with a, with a monocle that's like, Mahalo, Mahalo, this is my house and you're in it. It's never some dude that's just like, hey man, you're, you're fucking up my algorithm, dude. Those guys die. Hey man, you're really fucking up my Hulu uh, rec, uh, suggestions, man. I can't even hit the remote because I'm see-through. Um, cause that's the kind of ghost I would be, by the way. Who did I say? Who was I saying this to? I wouldn't be the ghost. If I was going to haunt motherfuckers, who did I just, I said this, did I say this on my tour report? I don't know, man. We're double dipping though. 
If I'm haunted, bro, I'm going to be the most cooling ass coast. I'm going to be chilling. But I'm going to be pissed off because people are going to be messing up my house. But I'm not going to be like, get out. I'm just going to be like, you better be a good roommate. But anyway, um, <laughs> you better keep the fridge stocked, even though I don't eat anymore because I'm an apparition. What the fuck is going on? There's no mayonnaise, even though I can't eat it. There's no food in the afterlife, and we don't get to bust nuts. What the fuck? I don't get to bust nuts or eat shrimp. <laughs> Dude, busting nuts and eating shrimp like I'm a fucking 3-6 uh, Mafia member. We eat so many shrimps, I get iodine poisoning. That's when hip-hop fell off. So, um, was that even them? I don't even know. But they did do that. Ah, we were fucking so many, so many tangents. So, we got to the uh, place... Uh, and it was a haunted house. It was a beautiful house, big farmland and shit. And, um, I don't fuck with Airbnb. I tell you, you know, since my Seattle trip, when I went to go, my cousin got married. I don't fuck with, with, with Airbnb. And I will tell you why spiders. Okay. There's never hotel, never spiders in hotels, always spiders in, in Airbnbs. Wasn't a spider this time. Thank God was an absolute fucking snake in the pool. Hey, Four Seasons, where you at, dude? Hey, fucking A-Loft or whatever that place is. Where you at? Straight up. A motherfucking snake in the pool? Like it's a Sam Jackson sequel? Motherfucker. Get this goddamn snake out this... It was a little one and it was dead, but still, dude. Watch where you step, dude. We had like six kids under five. So there was a snake in the pool. Yay. Uh, pool was fine. It wasn't filled up all the way. Still okay because it went deep. Thank God. But dude, let me tell you something about Airbnbs, man. The people who run Airbnbs, they don't give a fuck. They don't give a rat fuck. They go like this. Eh, it'll be fine. That's why people who have Airbnbs, they say that. They go like this. Ah, oh, the pillowcases. Ah, fuck, we need to... Sp- Eh, we'll rent it out this weekend. It's fine. It'll be fine. They won't want to switch the pillows. And then what happens? Uh, uh, right? A raccoon comes in, shits on the pillow, and then you need it. But you can't because they didn't stock them. And you get a text. I don't want to have to text any. I want the guy to be downstairs somewhere. You know? I want there to be a fucking. If there was a concierge in Airbnbs, great. A concierge, a bellman, and a. Now, I know it's a lot cheaper and a better, you know to do Airbnb sometimes, but you get what you pay for, man. Got there, needed the laundry, laundry machine, didn't work. Yes! When did I find that out? Beforehand? No, I found it out afterwards. When? When I put the clothes in there. When? Right then? Right when you put the clothes in there? No, when I put the Tide Pod on it. Oh, is that when you find it out? No, when you close the door on the Tide Pod and you hit start and it kind of went but didn't and then, oh, okay, so... You took the clothes directly out? No, 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 because it was locked and I couldn't. And the Tide Pod kind of released into the clothes. And so now, not only do my clothes smell like BO, but they also smell like Tide Pod. Yes, dude. So what the fuck did I do? Now I have to reserve a whole new suitcase, a whole suitcase just for laundry because I don't want my clean clothes smelling like BO and Tide Pod. Yes, dude. And I text the guy, can you get a guy come to come out? And he says, no, because it's Labor Day. Oh, dude. Airbnb's for the fucking... And you had a snake in the pool? Okay, fine. Now, here's the deal, dude. That's too much. So I say, knock some price off. He knocked two hundo off. Is that okay? I'd rather not deal with it, okay? So he knocked two hundo off, and then guess what, dude? He knocked two C-notes off, and then guess what, dude? Okay? He knocked two C-notes. He knocked two hundos off. He knocked two fucking... Right? He knocked them off. He knocked off two bills. And then guess what, dude? Then guess what? We had three days left. We had, I swear to God, one of the guys staying there was wearing, he wore a button up the last day. And I was like, why are you wearing a button up shirt? And he was like, that's the only thing that doesn't smell like BO. Okay. Then guess what though? What happened two days before we all left? Well, guess what? Let's see what happened. Oh, the fucking air conditioner broke. Yeah! 
I like to work out. So now I'm Bo City, and it's so hot. And dude, check this out. The fucking house is it's so hot. We're staying on the top floor. And was was there but no about heat? Oh, was there but no about heat, huh? And then it rises. So it, we're so hot, and the baby's up there. Oh shit, it's gonna die. Dude, and the and we're <laughs> But we got to worry about the fucking baby, right? He's four or five months old. And oh, well, it's 150 degrees up there on that third level. Oh, shit, the baby's going to die. Oh, for fuck's sake. He didn't, right? But I was worried. And I'm smelling. And I'm sweaty, dude. 200. Fuck it. Pay us to stay. I don't even want to be there anymore. But the people were very pleasant. The people were nice. Like the people that we stayed with, it was very nice. Kristen's friends really got to know them. Set up late nights with them. Played fucking code names. Played Catan, dude. I played Catan. Me, I played Catan. Dude, I fucking won too. See, you know what, man? The boy doesn't play games, but when he does, you give him two, three games, he'll win the third one. And he did, dude. <laughs> dude, you know what's funny too? One of the dudes, he won the first game and my my uh, Kristen was unpacking and she went in my, my backpack and she felt like, I get all, all sorts of crazy shit from uh, fans. Like just sometimes I get cool shit. Like they paint me pictures of like this. And then sometimes I get like, crazy shit like some guy goes like here's a shark tooth and i'm like oh thanks so kristen's going through my bag unpacking everything she goes hey what the hell's this and i'll look at it and she's like and it's a big ass shark tooth like this big with a necklace on it and i'm like i have no fucking idea a fan must have given it to me and i didn't want to throw it away because i didn't want to be rude like i'm like i'm a like i'm a you know what I mean? Like I'm Stifler or something like I'd wear it. I mean, dude, it was like a big, fa it must've been fake unless they got it from Megalodon or whatever. It, maybe it's worth something. I have no idea. So whoever won the game, well, I gave them, I said, you are now the owner of this shark tooth as a joke. One of the other guys there didn't know that I gave him the shark tooth as a joke, dude. And he texted me on the side, bro, that... <laughs> he texted me on the side, bro, that's crazy. That dude brought brought out his shark tooth necklace mid trip <laughs> like all of a sudden the guy had the confidence to wear his shark tooth necklace like you know fuck it these guys probably like me i could get i could get away with just now and dude i fucking didn't text him back because i so badly wanted to just sit in that for a bit man and i did and then later i told him and and fuck we had a laugh but then I won, so I got the shark tooth back. So basically, I'm Mr. Shark Tooth now. I got the shark tooth back. Um, deepest, bluest. My head is like a shark's fin. And hip hop took a turn. Um, I eat so many shrimps, I got I die poisoning. And hip hop took a turn. Deepest, bluest. My head is like a shark's fin. And hip hop took a turn. Okay, so it's all good. <laughs> so um anyway uh we stayed there in that haunted place and there's always one person or or more than one person that think that the the, the the place is haunted like someone takes a picture you know like we had a polaroid for some dude Kristen's great she'll just be like brought a polaroid camera and you're like what on a trip isn't it clunky to bring we had room and you're like okay and you start taking polaroids and of course some of them had like weird flashes in it and the person who thought that it, she was like see it's haunted and you're like, that's the flash from in the mirror. There's no such thing as ghosts, dude. You know? Like, I'm not saying there's no no afterlife. There might be. I'm almost dropping my mouth. But there's, like, to think of, like, ghosts roaming around. Like, all those shows. My buddy has one, the Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures, or whatever the fuck. It's like, yo, I love the dude. Love him. Love him. I love him. Honestly. All good. Where are they? Where are they, dude? It's, it's always the people that are like, you don't believe because they're like, dude, the one time and you're like, nah, dude, come, come correct, man. If you saw a ghost, you know how much you'd no want to not talk about it? That's where I'm at, bro. Mm -mm -mm. So anyway, we stayed there and then uh, Kristen was like, why don't you take Calvin to work when you go to Little Rock and I'll keep William and go to the wedding. And I was like, uh, that makes me like nervous to just be alone with him while I'm working, right? Because like I, I know I only I'm away for like an hour when I'm on stage, but like what if something happens? 
And I sucked it up, and I'm like, I want to do it. Dude, I'm so happy I did it, man. You could watch the tour report that we're going to put up, or maybe it's up at this point. I don't know yet. But, man, that was so awesome. And I, the whole time I was like, I hope he's old enough to remember this. You know, he's three and a half. And, like, uh, uh, like we had so much fun just palling around, dude. You forget, you forget that, uh, like you're hanging and then all of a sudden, just like somebody mentioned like, wow, your, your boy's being so good. And I was like, there we go, dude. That's it right there. You just fucked us, right? You just fucked us. God, he's so good. And then what? And then what? The iPad, you know, runs out of batteries. And then we're in Nam all of a sudden. We're, we're the fucking dude looking for, the grenade went off and he's looking for his leg and saving Private Ryan. And we're like, great. Dude, he can't play fucking two, three, four, or whatever the hell the game is called on iPad. He can't watch wacky inflatable tube man on YouTube videos that we download because we have YouTube Premium. We can't watch those anymore. We can't watch the, the fucking. So now he's just, you know what I mean? It's like that movie Dunkirk. Because the iPad ran out of batteries, and he's just like, it died, it died. Dude, my son's the shit, and I'll tell you why. He goes like this. We were he was coloring on the plane. And, we're at the point now where we're potty training him. And I talk about this on stage, so I'm not going to do too much of the joke, but like we're potty training him. And um, it's like he needs to wear a diaper still sometimes, but we because he has accidents, right? And sometimes he has accidents when he sleeps and wets the bed. So Kristen's like, dude, just put the fucking, put the fucking uh, diaper on when he sleeps. And I'm like, you know, headstrong. I'm like, nah, we got to ride it out. You know, he'll piss on everything. I don't give a fuck. Uh, he's on the plane and I got him. So I don't have him wearing a diaper. Dude, he's coloring and he goes like this. I'm peeing, dad. And I'm like, oh no, on the plane seat. And I go, wait, did you pee it or are you peeing? He says, yes, I'm peeing. I like to. So enjoy the seat. Who's ever sits there next. We tried to wipe it up, but, um, it's all good. I don't really, you know, it's like. <sighs> and then we went to Nashville. Dude, I played, we played the Ryman. The Ryman. Uh, Ryman. The Ryman. And um, it is, I, man, I played a lot of venues. I think it's the number one venue there is. It's an old, it's like it got church pews, pews in it, church pubes. It's got church pews in it. It was made in 1860 something or 1892. You know what I mean? I brought Lola, I brought um, uh, openers, Lulu, Denny, and Andrew, uh, uh, sorry, and Adam W. And, uh, and uh, Andrew, man, I'm fucking up left and right. Church pubes, Ryman, and I called him Andrew. Um, Adam W., Lulu, and uh, Denny, and we did a show there, and it was crazy that we did a show, and it, the place was built when my openers couldn't even get inside. But uh, so did a show there was awesome. The Ryman is absolutely phenomenal, dude. That's one of the venues that I would see. Like, just go to any show just to see it. And uh, Nashville is cool, man. It's really, really a cool f place. Uh, I've, I've come around on it because I don't like places that everyone always talks about like Austin and shit, but you know, you go to Austin, you have a good time. Nashville has a cool vibe. It's too much music. Just too much music. Stop with the music. You don't need to have music in every place. I mean, I've said this before, probably I said it on stage, but I'm like, dude, you don't have to have music in just like they, they, because I was like, Hey, I went down to the, the, the concierge at the, um, hotel and i was like hey where's the best coffee shop that's not starbucks because that's a fucking sucks at that because because of how much starbucks sucks and he was like oh there's a place called just love coffee or some shit i don't know this way that way this way that way go in there i go in there of course dude live music and i'm like fuck god damn it i just want four shots over ice and some you know woman is on stage singing to 12 people just in your head, in your head, zombie, zombie, zombie. And I'm like, I get, it's too loud. We can't talk. We got to be quiet. God forbid we say something too loud and fuck her rhythm up. I'm a performer. I don't want to fuck it up. But like, you know, and then she finishes the song and then three people clap. And I'm like, it's not enough. I got to help. 
And it's like, dude, you don't need to have... I feel like these places in Nashville, they're like, oh, we have to... You know? We have to... We're Nashville, so... I know it's a Banana Republic, but where's the stage going to be? You're looking at a sweater vest? In your head, in your head, zombie, zombie, zombie. Just putting on pants, cargo pants in a fucking fitting room. I've been down on it, baby. Ever since the day, man. Ever since the day. I've been down, I've been down on it, baby. No, I don't think I like these. Stand in the place where you are. Now face laughing about her. Wrecked and wonder why. Stand in the place where you are. So bad. Um, but the, but so it's too much music everywhere. Let's talk about something, dude. The fashion in Nashville is atrocious. Hey, look, I'm not a cowboy hat guy. If you're going to wear a cowboy hat, wear it with a cowboy outfit. Okay? At least wear it with Wrangler jeans. Okay? At least wear it with a top with one of those, with, with two pockets here, and they have the, 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 the you know what I mean, the triangle pa- thing to, where you lift up and put the thing in. At least wear it with that. Dude, motherfuckers are out here in Nashville wearing cowboy hats with like an Adidas jumpsuit. Or or even worse, a double-breasted suit. Don't wear a cowboy hat and Air Force Ones, dipshit. And the women, dude. If you're gonna wear a cowboy hat, it better be tan if you're gonna wear a cowboy hat better be black with tassels dude these fucking idiots will wear like a a, like a scaly white pink with the fucking and like and like what do you call it with the, the not the fringe on the dress or some shit and you're like yo dude Dolly, pardon me. Take that off. <laughs> well, producers go like this. But take that off your head. Off your head. Unbelievable, dude. The fashion in Nashville is some of the worst I've ever seen. Straight up. It's crazy, dude. You know what it's like? One of those th- things where they like the the things slide. Like the the uh, you'll have a person and you have one in thirds and it slides both ways and you got to hit the thing like a like a what do you call the the slot machines and you got to line up the person and you just get 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 what you get. That's what a guy looks like in Nashville. Just like with like cowboy boots, fucking cargo shorts, and then his top is like swimmies. And that's a guy in Nashville that like will tell you something and you're like, oh, huh? It's incredible. So shape up, huh? Nashville with the, when it comes to the fashion, um, my buddy took me to the Soho house to get a coffee. I I was like, I want to get a coffee. You want to come pick me up? You know, because I had the fucking... I had him come out by and I was like, where do you want to get a coffee? And he was like, oh, let's go to Soho House. They have really good iced coffee. So I was like, okay, fucking. So we went to the Soho House. That's that place where like you can pay like $2,000 a year to like become a member or some shit. I don't know. I don't have it. But, uh, and then you go, which I like would have never thought would have worked. But like we went and it was like, how does that work? How does fucking Soho House work, dude? How does it work? It's a restaurant. And then it has like a movie theater in it that you can like schedule watching stuff in. And then like a bar and you there's like a membership. Uh, hey, you're just a place. Like go fuck yourself. Like the cocksucking energy at Soho houses. It's unreal. 
And they got one like downtown and in Beverly Hills and Nashville and like one in Toronto and then London. And you could like pay thousands of dollars a, a, a year to go to a place. Dude, it's so cocksucky. It's ridiculous, dude. What do you do? You go in, you get, you sit down, you get some olives and a, and a tart. Ah, I'm in the place. And the one in Nashville had like a pool. And it's like, and a gym. And I'm like, this is a fucking hotel without the rooms, dude. Like, I'm like, you just are. And I said, this is a hotel without the rooms. You just pay yearly. And he's like, yeah. And he's like, but it actually does have rooms. And I'm like, oh, it's, it's just a hotel. This one in Nashville is just a hotel. And they're suckering motherfuckers to pay a membership. There's people out there in pools. Nobody was attractive except the dudes. The dudes were fit as shit. One chick was kind of att attractive, but whatever. Eh, you're just a place, you know? That'd be like if somebody like m m put made a, a membership for Marie Callender's and shit. All they'd have to do is like add like a, a grassy knoll on the outside and they'd be like, oh yeah, you, you gotta pay. You gotta pay. Dude, look at Mike Lindell, my pillow, fucking just cr crushed under pressure, you know? I love this. I love, you know, I love the my pillow and I don't, they're not paying me to say this, dude. The my pillows is shit. I have five of them, dude. I I love my pillows so much. I sleep on them and hold them. I hold them like they're fucking dogs. And I go to sleep and I can't without holding a my pillow. I hold my pillow so much in bed that my wife's like, "Why is there always a my pillow between us?" And I'm like, "You want me to get good sleep or not?" The other night I said, "Let's have sex," and she said, "I don't know if I really feel like like it." And I go like this. I brought the my pillow out. I put it in between us. She started laughing. Just a little marriage humor, you know. Dude, look at Mike Lindell, fucking con concave under a little bit of pressure. Okay, and I'm not asking about. Is this one where there was dep? Uh, de de what's the word? Deposition with the the January sixth. What the fuck did the my pillow guy have to do with this? By the way, did he put out a, information about it? I don't even know. How'd they lump the my pillow guy in on this January 6th shit? Yeah, but like in what way is he part of it? He always is always holding the pillow. Who's try who's fucking trusting him? Who's believing the shit he says? Isn't this guy a comedy? Isn't he a character? He's a comedy character. You can't put him in jail for being like, yeah, it's an insurrection and we gotta go take back the government. He's holding the fucking pillow. I, all the time I see this guy's holding a pillow. He's got a pillow, he's sitting on a pillow. I swear to God, in his deposition, he brought a pillow. Set it. The lumpy pillow call. Look at this, dude. You do not. This is like when he, you call his pillow lumpy, that's like in Biff and Back to the Future when you call him chicken. <laughs> dude, look, 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 he takes off. He goes to put... Here, he takes off his glasses when somebody calls him a lumpy, calls his pillow lumpy. This is how you know how gangster he is. Because he takes off the glasses. It's not just the fact that he takes off the glasses. It's because three seconds before them, he put them on, dude. So you knew he was getting ready to like either read something or chill with his glasses on. He put them on. Somebody called him Pillow Lumpy. He goes like this. Oh, 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 shit. Let's rewind some time. Okay. And I'm not asking about. Here we go. Put some glasses on. Calls. Lumpy. And uh, took them. No, they're em. not Lumpy Pillows. Uh, That's not what they call them. Oh, dude. On a real. No, no. They're not Lumpy Pillows. That's not what they call them. So good. Okay, and I'm not asking about the lumpy pillow calls. Uh, no, they're not lumpy pillows. That's not what they call on. Okay, that when you say lumpy pillows, now you're an asshole. You got oh, dude, and it's not enough to just call him an asshole. To drill the point home is amazing. Watch this. Now you're an asshole. You got that? Confirming he understands is the absolute gang. This dude, honestly, is the Tony Soprano of betting. And I, 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 I'm, I'm not, like, this is unreal. Okay, they're not lumpy pillows, all right. And 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 you, know, you call it a lumpy pillow, and that's what makes you an asshole. Do you got that? You're an asshole. Drilled it home. Is what you are. Like no, that. he's an asshole. Nice. In no, contempt. An ambulance chase. Eh, sir. In contempt. An asshole. That's what you are. The lumpy pillows kiss my ass. Eh, sir. In contempt. Put that in your book. Ah! 
Wow, dude. Uh, put that in your book. Such a white guy thing to say. And why don't you put that in your book, huh? Jiminy Christmas. No, they, they answer anything, any problem customer that wants to reach Mike Lindell. Those are the ones. Dude, like he's Ricky Henderson. It's so dope to do yourself in third person when you sell pillows. I want to talk to Mike Lindell. I want to talk to Mike Lindell. They send them to here and they go, or they call about, um, maybe they didn't get their pillow on time because of uh, um, the FedEx or whatever. But we'll cover them even though it could be somebody else's fault. Nobody called because of a lumpy pillow. But good, good one, though. You're done. Smash them, dude. Guy says, you're done? Yeah, I'm done. No, I like that. I like that he goes, yeah, I'm done. I like that. Now, here's why you can't trust him. What I'm saying Obviously, is you don't have Eh, hey, wasn't done, dude. Uh, wasn't done. Love it. I'm done. I'm done. And another thing, dude, the Tony Soprano of betting. Yeah, I'm done. Here we go. What I'm saying Obviously, is... you don't have a my pillow, too. Product placement, dude. Uh, you probably wouldn't be in such a bad mood if you got a good night's sleep. You don't, do you? What I'm saying is, Mr. Lindell... Asshole. Ow, dude! Just, yo, pressure. <laughs> hey, dude, don't call my pillows lumpy. Man, I swear to God, this guy's a rapper. Go ahead. No, I'm pissed. Yep. I understand. Yeah, go. When you're saying what? Oh, dude. I don't even know. What the fuck? How did it, like, what's with the lumpy pillows? Like, why? how did that even come up, you know? This is just a clip, but wow. Mike Lindell just fucking absolutely crushing under pressure, but also applying pressure. We love it. I love fucking my pillows, dude. And I love Mike Lindell. So there we go. Hey guys, I want to take a break. I want to talk to you about something that's uh, a new thing we're doing here on this podcast, uh, holler.baby. That's the website, holler.baby. And uh, it's uh, a new thing kind of that we're trying to do where you can buy shout outs or like quote unquote mini ads for me on this podcast. All you got to do is go to my page, holler.baby slash Chris D'Elia and write what you want me to say. And then I say it. Uh, it's as simple as that. Uh, so, you know, go check it out. It's cool. It's a website. Uh, some other podcasts are doing it already, but um, we are jumping on board and uh, you can do anything you want. You go, go have me say happy birthday to someone for you or plug your pizza shop or whatever. If you work at a Radio Shack that you really love and you want to shout out, then we'll do that too. Actually, I specifically would like to do one to a Radio Shack. But um, we'll put all the info up on the screen and in the description below. Holler.baby slash Chris D'Elia. And if you get it now in the next few days, then we'll put it up on the following week's episode. So that's how it'll be. But yes, uh, holler.baby slash Chris D'Elia. So go peruse, man. We're still figuring out the pricing and all that, but it'll be up on the page. So go to holler.baby slash Chris D'Elia and see what's up. Oh, dude, this one was funny. So many people sent me this. This one was funny, but my God. Is it, it it's, it's a level of funny that's pretty damn funny. The last second, the last second, the last second, dude, it, it, it is unreal. It was like when fucking Dogecoin exploded. I mean, dude, is that a guy, a real voice? Like f br the dog just dog handled him. You know what I mean? Like the dog just fucking straight up took him out. Let hey guy let go. See that's the thing. You shouldn't wrap that thing around like it's a fucking TurboGrafx, a handheld TurboGrafx 16 that you're gonna drop because of the excitement. You need to hold the leash like 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 this, only like this. You don't go and then hook around it. Then the dog takes you places, right? The dog walks you. Hey dog, you don't walk me. I walk you, right? You're in front of me, but I'm holding it like this, not like a handheld TurboGrafx 16 that you could drop because of the excitement. Okay. <laughs> Dude, I remember when I was a kid, I got that fucking handheld TurboGrafx-16. I saved, I saved all, all my chore money, and they, it came with a little fucking, like, strap thing. I'll never forget this, dude. And it was like, this is the excitement strap. You need to uh, you need to strap on and have it on when you're playing it in case the game gets too exciting and you drop it. 
and I did it. And then I told my friend about it, and he was like, "Why you got to drop it?" I was like, "In case the game gets too exciting." And I then I go to drop it. But anyway, you know, I like to play by the rules. So uh, the guy falls because of it because the dog walks him, and then the and then the and then the lady just doesn't give a fuck. You know, their marriage is so over; it's been over for thirty years, and she's just like, "Yeah, right." This is the best. Get the dog. Saw the so wind out of knocked his wind out. Here's the last second coming up. I'm gonna go back upstairs, Debbie, right. and just be in private, okay? <laughs> Dude, like we don't know what you're up to up there. Feeling bad, huh? You're up to some feeling bad, man. Oh, oh, dude, gonna be so much in pain the next day, you know? Honestly, you not only could have, but should have died right there. Being that old and having that dog just fucking drag you out. Honestly, I think that that wife, when she walked out, she just kept going and left him. We gotta play this again. Fuck him, she goes. Ask me. Here we go. Dog shoots out, doors open, boom, knocked over the. Are you all right? Doesn't give a fuck. He threw the chair, which is great. I've done that before when I was mad. I mean, why is he doing it like he's making fun of her? Get the dog, you know how you like to get the dog. <laughs> Fucking Adam Sandler, dude. <laughs> get the dog. Get the dog. Don't make a scene. Don't make a scene, she said. What? Dude, if you know what? I would have miraculously gotten better and left. Left the marriage. When you're in pain and someone tells you don't make a scene, dude, that's when I shit myself and make them clean it up. This is part of it. Watch. I'm gonna go back upstairs, Debbie. And just be in private, okay? The, the, okay? the level of how much he was trying to control his voice into a normal tone and cadence it makes my it makes my all the parts of humor in my body swell my humor glands swell just to the point where they're just getting rubbed to bust a nut dude i love it so much dude i love it so much that it, you know what like controlling his diaphragm so much and the 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 frenulum tip on my humor gland is getting touched so nicely when he does that that I'm just about to just squirt to infinity when he does this, dude. You know what, Debbie? I'm gonna go up and just just be in private when you know he just wants to piss, shit, and scream in divorce. And that is so amazing, dude. I gotta watch it one more time, dude, for my for my humor glands. For my for my frendulum tip. <laughs> Dude, you just <laughs> wait, wait, come on. Oh, dude, she says, "Don't make a scene." What a fucking. The dog's gone, and so is she. Uh, dude. And just be in private, okay? Oh, dude. The level of funniness and then... Oh, that flight left late, but so happy it did. God, so good. Bro. Let's just, I know this is kind of racist to talk about this, but we're gonna. Indian rap battles. Hey. Listen, man. Rap's just one of those genres that's just, it's not, it's not going to be Indian, okay? Let's just, all the other cultures and languages, cool, but hey, 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 hey. Once you hear this. Hey, 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 Indians, hey, you know what? Go back to your, or whatever. I know it sounds racist, but dude, dude, on 
fucking nothing rhymes. Just dude. Here's how you know it's so bad. They start saying English words in it because they're just like, well, you know, fuck, fuck this, though, all right? Come on, dude. Here we go. Indian rap battles, dude. Talking. Said Mickey Mouse. Dude, how about in a here's how you know it's bad. What fucking rap battle have you ever seen where people just break out into applause in the middle of it? Dude, imagine you had like Freeway and Beanie Siegel going at it, and in the and then that somebody did something, and Memph, Memph Bleak was just like, dude, and everyone else was like, oh shit, man, dude, dude, <laughs> dude, the fucking mumfana mumfana bumfana, oh dude, forget it, he just. dude, we clap, you know why we clap because of the mumfana bumfana part, dude, unbelievable, dude. This is just unreal, dude. We gotta play. <laughs> dude, he said, Mickey Mouse, and then the other guy said, You all like Mickey Mouse. Rap Rock Tung Tau Te Shana, and then the guy's like, just joking. This honestly, they're dressed like people in Nashville. Raja Basha, who you never buddled, they didn't do the crap. Bleeding yet, just a mashup. Cute rap to some Mickey Mouse. <laughs> you represent Mickey Mouse, dude. And that was the that was the line, dude. Hey, Indians. You know? So good. Uh, <laughs> come on. My internet sucks. Yes, dude. But you're with me. But you're with me. Oh, this is great. Negus, um, what is the language of origin? Uh, Ethiopian to Amharic. Come on. Um, what is the definition? A king. It's used as a title of the sovereign of Ethiopia. Negus. Negus. I mean, Negus. come on, dude. Could you use it in a sentence? The Negus ruled Ethiopia until the coup of 1974. Come on, dude, this white kid. Sweating. <laughs> Negus. Oh, so canceled. Dude, we're going to get demonetized because of this. Negus. Uh. And, and would you say the word loudly for the judges? Negus. Oh. One more time. Negus. Ah. Negus. Negus. Thank you. Now go to prison. Negus. Uh. I actually never. N e g u s. Negus. Yes. Oh, dude, and that's when the black community accepted him. He was so surprised at the end he got that. Wow. I mean, hey, pick different words for it, you know? Next word, flag it. Next word, flag it. From the origin of what in West Hollywood, the king of West Hollywood. Can you use it in a, what is it? What's the definition? The king of West Hollywood. Flag it. <laughs> um <laughs> Ah, oh, man. My son, I just hear my son outside saying, I'm going poop. So he's using the toilet. Awesome. Speaking of toilets, Delta flight returns after passenger has diarrhea all the way through plane. Hey, dude, you know, it must have been David Sullivan for real. Dude, David Sullivan will eat everything on the planet, but not, but get it without cheese. And, and he'll be like, man, I don't know why my stomach hurts. I don't know why my stomach hurts. I didn't eat the cheese. And you're like, yeah, dude. You ate everything else. You ate jalapenos and ice cream. Um, passengers reboard flight to Spain after eight-hour delay while social media posts describe flight crew mopping up mess. Wow, dude. Passengers reboard flight to Spain. It, it, that's so great. It happened in Spain, you know? The most romantic city, and they just fucking shit all over the aisle of a Delta, of a, of a, of a, of a 747. Footage, they have footage of it. Footage is everywhere, you know? God, footage is everywhere. Footage has emerged of the onboard medical emergency. That's so great that 
the one suffering diarrhea uh, allowed to reboard after an eight hour delay, making it to, wow, he was allowed to reboard. Jesus Christ, I would have given him a fucking butt plug. Give him a seat with a dildo on it. They tried to do their best to mop up the mess with paper towels. Ew, dude. Ah. Uh, uh, doing the best to mop up the mess with paper towels and scented disinfectant, but the, but that only had the effect of making the plane quote smell of vanilla shit. One passenger said, "That's like that old uh, Robert uh, Rich, Robert Schimmel joke." Uh, another described Kevin Crew. You ever you, where he's like, "You ever shit in the?" And then you you use Lysol and it smells like you shit in the forest. Uh, another described cabin crew placing a an exorbitant paper run runner over the aisle. Dude, imagine having a deep plane because some guy ate a goddamn chalupa. Dude, I would be so pissed off. So they had to go back down and on uh, on the ground because they called it an onboard medical issue. I'll tell you what. If I knew we were going down, if I knew we were going down because of a guy taking his shit on the... By the way, how do you not know it's coming? Get to the toilet quicker and also don't uh, have it leak out. You know, hold your pants or tuck them in, you know, tuck your fucking pants in your socks or or what are you wearing? Shorts on plane? I guess don't wear shorts on plane. But then again, you're in Spain and probably everyone wears shorts on Spain on, on the plane because it's fucking, you know, it's like a super cool, like romantic town. And you just kind of want your balls flailing. But I, if, if I was on a plane and then it did the, the people shit all over the aisle. Guess what? Guess what your boy's doing right then? Shitting and pissing wherever the hell he wants to. If we're going, we're going, we're landing anyway. I don't give a fuck, dude. Look at this. They wrote this article. This place wrote this article, The Guardian, and then they wrote, I hope you appreciate this article. Before you move on, I was hoping you would consider taking a step of supporting The Guardian's journalism, you know? Go suck my. Are you kidding me? Look at this. From Elon Musk to Rupert Murdoch, a small number of billionaire owners have a powerful hold on so much of the information that reaches the public about what's happening in the world. Dude, they just did an article about how someone shit on the plane. Put that after the other political articles, you know? I love how this strike... Yo, let me ask a question. This actors and writer strike, what's going on? Because they're still making movies. They get all exemptions and shit. There's so many different levels of corruption in this bullshit. It's such fucking malarkey and horse shit. Drew Barrymore is still doing her talk show. The only thing that makes the Drew Barrymore worse than the Drew Barrymore show is no writers. They're, the show's so bad. And she's just like... Dude, the fucking, these actors don't give a fuck about anything but themselves. Drew Barrymore slammed by Hollywood for b bringing talk show back amid strikes. Um, Drew Barrymore is being criticized by fellow actors and writers on social media for a decision to bring back the Drew Barrymore show is set to return April 18th. And that's in the middle of the fucking strike. Barrymore is not violating SAG AFRA rules, but yeah, no shit because there's fucking exemptions and also, uh, so many different levels of corruption. Um, uh, guild contracts for talk shows, game shows, variety shows, and soap operas was renewed and ratified in 2022. Her show does employ WGA writers. This means that so it has to go without writers, without WGA writers, or or no writers. Dude, I'd love to see if she wings it. First in line to watch it. I can't watch that. I can't wait to watch that train wreck. But people are pissed off like, uh, you know, uh, what's his name from uh, West Wing and then the other guy from the other show. I say it that way because who fucking cares who's pissed off, you know? Uh, this person, Jennifer Gross, who spells Jennifer with a G so we can trust her, says, Drew Barrymore has always been someone who would recognize her privilege and aim to evolve, so I hope she will reconsider this hasty decision intended to pay her crew because it weakens both unions to openly endorse scabbing. She could personally fund their salaries for eternity. I mean, you know, like, l this is where you lose me. No, she can't. For eternity. Don't ever say eternity in any argument. Lonnie Love, who I actually fucking love. I love Lonnie Love. She said, uh, 
if you're giving if you're giving Drew Barry more heat, you got to hit all the other shows. Someone is writing. Still, the focus should be on getting the studios back to the table so everyone get back to work. She's right. London Love is the shit. Um. Oh, Adam Conover, that guy, who always has something to say about everything, dude. This is incredibly disappointing. Drew Barrymore shows it employs WGA writers who are currently on strike. She is choosing to go back on the air without them and forcing her guests to cross a picket line. Drew, this harms your writers and all the union workers. Please reconsider. God, that guy fucking talks about anything. A, a fucking leave will blow by Ben Affleck. And I'll be like, you know, we need to talk about this leave situation. Bradley Whitford, dude. Oh, you... Dude, these fucking people just come out of the woodwork. Drew Barrymore, I own this choice. We are in compliance with not discussing or promoting film and television that is instru- that is struck of any kind. I don't know. And Bradley Whitford, oh, you own it for sure, Drew Barrymore, and we'll never forget it. I love it, dude. So good. Everyone is uh, sucks, you know? Except Lonnie Love. I love her. Um. Uh, anyway, dude. God, this fucking Jimmy Fallon thing is so crazy. The fucking non-article is so insane, dude. You read this thing that fucking cuck-ass Rolling Stone made? I mean, dude, they just make an article about anything. They fucking made an article about how Jimmy Fallon is mean sometimes. I don't give a shit. Did this whole thing about Ellen? Like, the Ellen one was a little bit more, uh, you know, eye-opening, I guess. If you say, but I don't give a fuck. If your boss is mean, who gives a shit? Jimmy Fallon's a shit, and he went to. He, they, like, we we got in touch with fifty employees. Uh, we we Rolling Stone uh, c- called a f- hundred uh, employees that used to work for the Tonight Show or somebody worked for the Tonight Show. Dude, you're gonna get something negative. You're gonna get something negative. Yeah, you know, sometimes he was a good guy, but also sometimes when he was a bad mood, all bets were off. And one time he was drunk, and it was it was we were walking on eggshells. And some guys said that they got uncomfortable, and they got so uncomfortable that they 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 turned their, their Tonight Show dream into their nightmare, and they never wanted to work in the, on in entertainment television again. Hey, dude, that guy's a pussy. Stop coddling these motherfuckers, dude. I read that article on Jimmy Fallon. It ain't shit, dude. And I know you'd be like, oh, it's Chris D'Elia. He's toxic. Bro, stop throwing that word around. These fucking articles are lies, dude. You could talk to, you could, it's so ridiculous what they did to Jimmy Fallon, man. It's so ridiculous. And then people are like, oh, wow, a, a fucking, another white guy with his privilege. Dude, the, the, the society is, is, no, not society. The media is so fucking shitty to white men it's on and also just men that it's just unreal it's so shitty to men it's unreal the media it's so crazy and everyone no one will talk about it because oh you know people are starting to talk about it no one will talk about it because they don't want to get in trouble bro i've been in trouble already i don't give a fuck it's so dumb dude and then people online will just pretend they don't fucking even believe it, but they're talking, oh man, this sucks about Jimmy Fallon. And then you talk to him and they're like, yeah, they got him, man. I hope they don't get me. It's such bullshit horseshit, dude. Read the Jimmy Fallon article. It's nothing, dude. It's nothing. They tried to fucking act like Seinfeld. He was on set with Seinfeld and Seinfeld uh, and Jimmy Fallon yelled at somebody uh, on set that Seinfeld was there and Seinfeld was like, no, Jimmy, apologize to him. And they tried to act like it was this tense moment that made everyone awkward. And then Seinfeld put out a statement that was like, yo, it wasn't like that. I love Jimmy Fallon and we talk sometimes. This is the shit that the media does, dude. I mean, dude, it's unbelievable. And obviously I have my gripes about it. But dude, the, the shit, the piss, piss poor journalism that they do. Just to fucking promote an agenda that gets clicks, I guess. Oh, what they want? What they want? Jimmy Fallon to lose his job? Fuck out of here. This is why every single day I thank the fucking people that show up and sit in seats, dude. Because I'm so grateful for these motherfuckers to see through the bullshit, man. Jimmy Fallon, go on tour. See who loves you. Because you're going through a rough time where you think everybody wants to fucking kill you. Trust me, dude. Trust me. I see through the lies. These people who show up and fucking sit down to watch you do comedy are the motherfuckers that get it. And every day I'm grateful for these. Every day. I see the fans come out. I'll make this about me now. But I see the fans come out, dude, and I see how effusive they are and how much 
how how down they are. And now I'm fucking double down for them. I, I, everybody that comes and sits in a seat for fucking a comedy show, I don't have, dude, I don't have any deals. I don't have brand deals. I don't have, everything is direct to consumer. Everything is from me, direct to consumer. Maybe I have one or two deals. I have no idea. I don't want to speak out of turn. I can't think right now. But uh, uh, these guys are out there fucking, you know, Burt Kreischer's doing a deal with dude wipes or whatever the fuck it is. Hey, I wipe my cock so I don't come too early with my wife. All right, I get it. Bro, bro, I don't have any of that shit. My shit is all direct consumer. And the people who sit down, they see through the bullshit. And I love you motherfuckers for that shit. I love you motherfuckers for that shit. And the media can keep coming after fucking Jimmy Fallon or whoever the fuck it is. I'm trying to play the Tupac thing, but I can't. It's broken. Um, yeah, dude, I love it, man. I mean, it's so it's so shitty uh, that they do that to him, man. It's like bosses are shitty sometimes. You know why? Because people are shitty sometimes. They act like this is a fucking privilege thing. God, this is supposed to be a comedy podcast. But they act like it's a privilege thing. Dude, it's just a person thing, some of this shit. Some of this shit. Not all of it. Some of this shit, yeah, it's a privilege thing. Like Drew Barrymore thinking about how she's going to fucking still do her show. Why doesn't the media eat that shit up? It's just some fucking janky post from New York Post. Or the blast media. Hey, this is what people said on Twitter. Do a fucking thing on that. Nah, they don't give a fuck because it ain't Jimmy Fallon. Uh, It ain't a guy. All right, that's it. I'm hot. Woo. Uh, Appreciate you guys. Uh, You guys are great. Uh, I'll be in Ottawa. I'll be in um, Pittsburgh. I'll be in Cleveland. I'll be in Detroit. I'll be in Orlando. I'll be in Fort Myers, Richmond, Virginia, uh, Baltimore, Philadelphia, and Reading, Pennsylvania. Go to chrislea.com. And uh, that's it for the YouTube episode. We will see you guys on Patreon if you want to see the rest of it. Patreon.com slash chrislea. For just six bucks, you get the rest of the episode. You get all the rest of the, all the episodes. You get all the extended, uncut episodes. And you get like 35 episodes that have already been aired because we do one a month. And we've been on this Patreon thing for a while. So patreon.com slash chrislea. And I appreciate every one of you motherfuckers. I love you. Thank you. Thank you.